Are you an aspiring creative in entertainment, business, fashion, design, or the arts? Do you want to elevate your creative passion project to the next level? Then this show is for you. Whether you want a career in television, film, radio, literature, music, or beyond, Creative Breakthrough will show you how to take your dreams and turn them into reality. This show will not only leave you feeling motivated and inspired, but also provide you real-life tools to pursue the creative journey you have always wanted. I'm your host, creative coach, and chicken wing lover, Shireen Kassab, a.k.a. The Funny Brown Girl. Yes, I have an unhealthy obsession with chicken wings. Now, get ready to flex your creative muscle. Hey, welcome back to another episode of the Creative Breakthrough. Hey, I'm really excited about this week's episode. So this week should be a solo episode hosted by me, but we're going to do something different. Last week, when I talked to Precious Hannah, her interview was so inspiring and kind of long, so I had to trim a lot of it out. And some of the parts that I trimmed out were super interesting. It was about creativity and inspiration. And so I want to share those parts of the story of hers with you all today, because I, for one, am a huge shoe junkie. I love shoes, whether they're sneakers or slip-ons or loafers. I love shoes. I buy them all the time. I have a problem, but I'm also a huge Jordan fan. I mean, I have over 10 pairs of Jordans in my house. And so when Precious agreed to talk about her journey and how she got to Jordan, I was super excited to talk to her because For those of you who don't know, Michael Jordan has a line of shoes called Jordans, and I don't know how many he's released at today, but he releases a pair of shoes almost weekly, and they always sell out. I haven't been able to get my hands on a pair of Jordans in over a year because I will line up to buy them, but by the time it's my turn, they're gone. They're sold out. And so I was really excited to hear how does one work for one of the most iconic shoe brands in the world and come up with new ideas that people still want to buy week after week after week. But before we get started, I want to say thank you. For those of you who haven't heard, the time management episode that I did hit the top 100 episodes on Apple iTunes podcast. And last week's episode with Precious Hannah, Jordan footwear designer, hit the top 200 Apple podcast episodes. So thank you all for listening. So let's get started, okay? This first story is from Precious Hannah's Time at Pencil, an innovative footwear design academy based in Portland, Oregon, that provides its students the opportunity and knowledge required to become footwear designers. In this story, you're going to hear how Precious came up with the creativity to come up with an idea for her final project. She's also going to share how she had to stretch herself beyond her comfort zone because this was totally not in her realm of interest, and you will quickly see why. So the next day, Dwayne goes, okay, Precious, you're going to design a sandal. And I was like, what? He's like, yeah, you're going to design a sandal for Victoria's Secret. Now, let me, let me just, (laughs) (laughs) let me just say something real quick. I was, I was spooked because I only went to Victoria's Secret with my sister. And I was, you know, me and her with her. And she's like, hey, do you like this? You know what sisters do? Hey, do you like this? Uh, Sure. How about this one? Yeah, that's cool. What about this one? Um, sorry. And I didn't really wear sandals. Like I was straight footwear, like sneaker chick. So given me the the assignment of a sandal in Victoria's Secret were probably like my two worst fears in life. So I said, okay. Um, I remember sitting at my desk and he's like, why are you sitting at your desk? And I was like, I'm just trying to figure out how I'm supposed to do this. And he's like, you need to go out to the store. You need to go talk to people. So I said, okay. So there was a store not too far from um, where we were doing classes, Pioneer Square, got down to Pioneer Square. And I, I was just standing there awkwardly in front of Victoria's Secret because I was like, I don't even know what I'm supposed to ask these people. Like, like I'm a chick. And I wear all these undergarments, but how am I supposed to show this, like, turn this into a sandal? And it was this other chick that was with me who was girly girl. Like, she walked in and she was like, hey, you know, what kind of, what new bras you guys have, kind of panties you guys working with? Like, she was so social with them to the point where I didn't have to ask any questions. I just sat there and listened to their conversation. And I was like, oh, okay. So that's when they were coming out with their new bra, uh, strap, um, interchangeable top thing so I was like okay well maybe if I 
<laughs> maybe if I took the strap that they're using and kind of like put it on a sandal soft footbed and you'd be able to like change it. So if you go into the club, you know, you can make them all strappy. And if you're not at the club, you can make them look nice. And if you're in corporate, you can make them look corporate. Like just having a shoe that you can do five things with, with one pair, just different strapping systems. And then I ended up doing that. Dwayne was like, yo, this is dope. Well, he didn't say that. He was just like, crushes, this is cool. And I was like, thank you. How great was that story, guys? All she had to do was go to the store, observe people, and really just listen. And sometimes that's all creative is about, putting yourself in the environment in which you're trying to be creative and just listen, take in your surroundings. Okay, so the next story is about when Precious is at Nike and she has to do a project for Nike. Let's hear how she comes up with her creativity for this project. Cool, so then so then what happens? You finish this internship in three months and then what? So we had this huge show at the end and like everyone from like Nike, if they have time, they come through and they look at it and they say, oh, this is great. This looks dope. I think my internship class at the time was like 15, 15 creators, maybe 16. Um, Yeah. And my, I ended up doing a bag that was inspired off a brown paper bag. Um, I just noticed that a lot of people at Nike at the time were using brown paper bags and back where I grew up at brown paper bag to me meant that candy. I was getting candy. My dad, when I had a crazy sweet tooth as a kid and I still do, but every time he would bring home candy, it would be in a brown paper bag. So it kind of brought me back to my childhood of like, how can I take something that I'm familiar with candy in this brown paper bag and turn it into something that other people can understand or just like feel where I was coming from and uh after I did that I created this bag I called it the goodie bag it basically created this whole storyline of like you're going to the store you see this bag it reminds you of your childhood you grab the bag you look inside the bag you see that there are compartments for like shoes um books, clothes, laptop. Oh, and there was a raincoat attached to it because it's always raining in Portland. <laughs> so like this good, it was like the goodie bag that never stopped giving. <laughs> um, and like when I did my presentation, I had these pillars that were lime green and I like splashed them with bubblegum pink and like set my product on top. I had people who, that helped me do footwear for it. I had um somebody down in the hive who helped me create a shirt. So I had a shirt and it was like, what's in your bag? And it was just like brown paper bags everywhere. But I knew that I needed to like catch people's attention. So as bright as I could make my product or just products, it would bring people in, even if they hated it. It would just be like, what is, what is that? And that's what I wanted. I wanted that reaction of like, what are you doing? What is that? This was a project that Hannah did for her internship at Nike. She ended up getting a full-time offer and she's now been at Nike for over six years, which means the executives loved her creativity. So let's break it down, okay? So first, she observed. She saw that people were using brown paper bags. She used that as inspiration. She made it relatable. She put a rain jacket in there because she knew people in Oregon would get that. She knew that people there knew that it rains all the time and she made it functional for them. But the best part that I love about this idea is that she utilized her network in the previous episode that where we talked to precious hannah she talks a lot about networking and this is a perfect example about collaborating it's so important for creatives to collaborate utilize your network talk to people be inspired and make the best product possible i know as a comedian i do this all the time i go into the environment that i'm trying to write the joke about i think about it from another person's point of view i try to make the joke relatable and i will work on it with other comedians just to make sure that it makes sense and it's the best structured joke that I can do. And that's exactly what Hannah did. She utilized all the resources around her to make sure that her presentation was memorable, stuck out, and got her that full-time offer. In this last story from Precious, she talks to us about where she gets her inspiration from. Let's take a listen. Now, your idea for the Victoria's Secret sandal was super cool. Where do you, where does your inspiration come from? Um, various things. Uh, I mean, at that time, I guess I just I just listen to people. Are you like on the message boards and or just like talking to people who aren't sneakerheads? Because I feel like if you talk to somebody that's a sneakerhead, they're gonna tell you, "Oh, well, the vamp needs to be this, and the material needs to be that, and yada yada yada." <laughs> but if you talk to somebody who has no idea about 
design or footwear or anything, they're like the most genuine. It's the most genuine conversation that you could have because they're being so, what is it, uh, transparent with you about the problems that they're actually having. Where you could be like, oh, you're having foot support issues or you your kid is toe dragging their foot all the way all across the concrete bam I need to put something there or I need to think about it like this or I should look at it like that like so I look at that's that's where I grasp my inspiration from that and music I love music who's your favorite artist musician artist Sango can't say I know who that is (laughs) (laughs) you gotta look him up man selection (laughs) The election is like, where is that? And there you have it. Precious Hannah's tips on creativity. Guys, if I got anything out of this episode, it was that it's very important to be observational and to listen. It's amazing how much you can get done when you're just observing what's around you and listening. And it's funny because Tina Mabry in episode two actually talked about the same thing. She was like talking about how she'll sit at a coffee shop and she'll listen to people talk the dialogue to help her write her films and her movie scripts. And it's the same thing for as a stand-up comedian. I've noticed that when I just observe people and just listen, how many jokes I'm able to write. And I feel like if you're writing a book, if you're painting, just observe what's around you. Be inspired by what's happening in your space and listen to what's happening and just utilize that to come up with that next big idea, just like Precious Hannah's doing right now at Nike. I hope you guys found this useful too. I will see you back here next week, same time, same place, depending on where you're getting this podcast. I'm on Apple, Spotify, YouTube, SoundCloud. I There's like seven or eight other places, guys. I don't really remember right now, but there you have it. So now, Go out there and flex your creative muscle and keep winning. Hey, before you hit pause, did you find this episode helpful and enjoyable? If so, could you leave an Apple podcast, aka iTunes review? It'll take you less than one minute and mean the world to me. The more ratings and reviews the show gets, the more people are able to find this podcast. If you're unsure how to leave a review, no worries. If you're on your iPhone or iPad, go to the homepage of this show and scroll down to write a review. Click on it and you'll be able to rate and review the show. If you're on a Mac from iTunes, go to the show homepage and on the top, click ratings and reviews. Also, please subscribe to get the latest episodes once they drop. If you enjoy the episode and know someone who would love it, please share. From your iPhone, click on the icon with three dots and then share via social media, email or text. If you want to hear more, head over to funnybrowngirl.com forward slash podcast. You can also find me online. I'm on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Funny Brown Girl. Also, sign up for my free newsletter for more tips to advance your creative journey at funnybrowngirl.com forward slash subscribe. And again, if you enjoyed the show, do me a favor and subscribe, rate, and review on Apple Podcasts. Now, go flex your creative muscle and keep winning. Thank you for listening. See you next week.